I just can't make this stuff up sometimes. <laughs> David Brooks, who is a joke, uh, the House conservative, or I guess House Republican, uh, at the New York Times, a uh, so-called liberal of Jewish descent who uh, poses as a Republican. I mean, you got to just see this guy's face sometimes. Uh, I'm, I don't have it up there, but just, just take a look at this guy, and it tells you plenty that you need to know. He has a new opinion piece out. This is the <coughs> Republican, David Brooks. It's called, and I'm going to use what, I don't know, I don't remember how he talks. I think he has a pretty normal voice, but the kind of voice his character seems to indicate he has, his writing seems to indicate he should have, I mean. And this is his piece today. I miss Barack Obama. And let me give you a little background. Um, this was the guy who was so impressed by Obama during the primary in 2008. He famously said, I mean, Obama snowed a number of people, George Will, some neocon types uh, who probably, probably wanted to be deceived or disingenuous about their conservatism and republicanism to begin with. But Brooks uh, had the famous line, he was very impressed by the crease in Obama's pants. I'm not making this up. I mean, as if, well, I mean, as if Obama isn't skinny, so it's easier to keep a crease anyway. Um, but yeah, it's a famous line, and you can imply from that uh, something other than a crease going on in Brooks's pants in relation to Obama. But let me read you this in my, what should be David Brooks's voice of voice. As the primary season, and I'll in put my own commentary in there inevitably. And this is the first time I've seen it. I just want it to be spontaneous for me. From David Brooks. As this primary season has gone along, a strange sensation has come over me. I'm not making that up, by the way. That's his words. I miss Barack Obama. Now, obviously, I disagree with a lot of Obama's policy decisions. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been disappointed by aspects of his presidency. I hope the next presidency is a philosophic departure. But over the course of this campaign, it feels as if there's been a decline in behavioral standards across the board. Many of the traits of character and leadership that Obama possesses, and that maybe we have taken too much for granted, have suddenly gone missing or are in short supply. The first and most important of these is basic integrity. Um, again, I'm not making up the next line. The Obama administration has been remarkably scandal-free. Think of the way Iran Contra or the Lewinsky scandal swallowed years. He, he used the term swallowed, yes. Swallowed years from Reagan and Clinton. By the way, I should point out with this Brooks Obama piece, Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Okay, so here we go on. We've had very little of that from Obama. Larry Sinclair, Reggie Love, Kai Penn. He and his staff have generally behaved with basic rectitude. Hillary Clinton is constantly having to hold these defensive press conferences when she's trying to explain away some vaguely shady shortcut she's taken or decision she's made, but Obama has not had to do that. By the way, I'm no Hillary fan. Why is she the one being blamed for Benghazi and not Obama? I mean, look, blame them both. But where was Obama, the freaking commander-in-chief during the time? During that whole time? We don't know. I mean... As blameworthy as Hillary may be, maybe, Obama maybe, he and his wife have not only displayed superior integrity themselves, they have mostly attracted and hired people with high personal standards. There are all sorts of unsightly, how many times has Sharpton been in the White House, by the way? There are all sorts of unsightly characters floating around politics, including in the Clinton camp and in Gov Chris Christie's administration. This sort has been blocked from Team Obama. By the way, New York Times, your, t your standards are lower. They didn't capitalize Team and Team Obama. Seriously. That's a pathetic mistake you all have that, regardless of political uh, bias. Second, a sense of basic humanity. Donald Trump has spent much of this campaign vowing to block Muslim immigration. You can only say that if you treat Muslim Americans as an abstraction. President Obama, meanwhile, went to a mosque, looked into people's eyes, and gave a wonderful speech reasserting their place as Americans. Again, this is from David Brooks, Republican of the New York Times. Going on. By the way, and keep in mind what everyone who actually knows, or so many people who actually have worked 
with Obama say about his humanity and his compassion behind the scenes. He doesn't even do the Bill Clinton fakery thing. He's exuded this basic care and respect for the dignity of others time and time again. Let's put it this way. Imagine if Barack and Michelle Obama joined the board of a charity you're in involved in. You'd be happy to have such people in your community. Could you say that comfortably about Ted Cruz? By the way, Ted Cruz seems to have a pretty normal marriage. Are you buying this uh, Barack Michelle thing? The quality of a president's humanity flows out in the ex unexpected but important moments. Third, a soundness in his decision-making process. Over the years, I have spoken to many members of this administration who were disappointed that the president didn't take their advice. But those disappointed staffers almost always felt that their views had been considered in depth. Oh my God. Sorry, I just need to take a breather. Obama's basic approach is to promote his values as much as he can within the limits of the situation. Bernie Sanders, by contrast, has been so blinded by his values that the reality of the situation does not seem to penetrate his mind. And he actually uses the word penetrate, yes. Take health care. Passing Obamacare was a mighty lift that led to two gigantic midterm election defeats. As Megan McArdle pointed out in her Bloomberg View column, Obamacare took coverage away from only a small minority of Americans. Sanders Care <laughs> would take employer coverage away from tens of millions of satisfied customers, destroy the health insurance business, and levy massive new tax hikes. This is epic social disruption. And by the way, epic is the most played out word. It's so freaking annoying when people use epic as an adjective other than ironically. But going on, to think you could pass Sanders care through a polarized Washington and in a country deeply suspicious of government is to live in intellectual fairy land. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad. Um, President Obama may have been too cautious, especially in the Middle East, but at least he's able to grasp the reality of the situation. Fourth, grace under pressure. I happen to find it charming that Marco Rubio gets nervous on the big occasions that he grabs for the bottle of water. By the way, it might have been hot. You know, people do need to hydrate, dude. Breaks out in the sweat and went robotic in the last debate. It shows Rubio is a normal person. And I happen to think over... By the way, did you see about the phone party there, David? And I happen to think overconfidence is one of Obama's great flaws. But a president has to maintain equipoise under enormous pressure. Obama has done that, especially amid the financial crisis. After Saturday night, this is now an open question about Rubio. Fifth, a resilient sense of optimism to hear Sanders or Trump, Cruz and Ben Carson campaign is to wallow in the pornography of pessimism. To conclude that this country is on the verge of complete collapse. That's simply not true. We have problems, but they are less serious than those faced by just about any other nation on Earth. People are motivated to make wise choices, by, made more by hope and opportunity than by fear, cynicism, hatred, and despair. Unlike many current candidates, Obama has not appealed to those passions. Passions, I mean. No. Obama has not been temporarily, temperamentally perfect. Too often he's been disdainful, aloof, especially toward me. Hi, Barack. Happy Valentine's Day. Sorry, that's my insertion. Resentful and insular. But there is a tone of ugliness creeping around the world as democracies retreat, as tribalism mounts, as suspicion is suspiciousness and authoritarianism, authoritarianism takes center stage. Obama radiates an ethos of integrity, humanity, good manners, and elegance that I'm beginning to miss, and that I suspect we will all we will all miss a bit, regardless of who replaces him. Again, I did not make those words up, other than where it was fairly obvious to a reasonably intelligent person that I made them up, but that is David Brooks, the New York Times' Republican columnist, writing, I miss Barack Obama. And to everyone, with that in mind, Happy Valentine's Day.